Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining today's How to Work with USAID webinar. My name is Matt Johnson, and I am a USAID's industry liaison, as well as the communication director for USAID's Office of Acquisition Assistance. I'm joined by my colleague, Rachel Chilton, who's our deputy industry liaison, as well as deputy communications director in our office. Uh, it's really a pleasure to be speaking with you today uh, about how to work with USAID. Really, the purpose of today's uh, discussion and session is taught, to talk about the partnership process for working with the agency. Um, so to do that, we kind of want to talk a little bit about who USAID is as an organization. We think it's important for you to understand sort of how we operate, how we work, um, then to talk about sort of what does it look like to partner with USAID. Uh, we also want to highlight some different ways to stay connected to our team and to the agency to know about what's happening within the organization. Uh, as well as give you a quick walkthrough of our new website, workwithusaid.org, before we answer any questions. While we're going through the, the discussion today, feel free to drop any questions you have into the chat box. We'll try and get to as many questions we have um, uh, during today's discussion. Uh, additionally, um, we will be dropping some links into the comment box um, for you to um, take a look at for additional information, for additional resources. We encourage you to take a look at those. Um, and following the webinar, we will send out a recording of the webinar as well as highlight some of the links that we talk about in today's session. So if, if you missed something today, don't worry about it. We'll share both the slide deck, a recording to the presentation, as well as the links that we have uh, that we'll be sharing. Um, so I'm going to start off by just talking a little bit about USAID as an organization. Uh, as I talked about, um, USAID has its own kind of unique culture, uh, way we operate, um, that I think it's important for you to understand as you think about trying to partner with uh, the organization or as the agency. Um, so our mission, as it says here on the slide, is to promote and demonstrate democratic values abroad and advance a free and peaceful and prosperous world. USAID is a U.S. government agency. We operate separately, both from um, our State Department colleagues or diplomatic colleagues, as well as our military colleagues. Um, but we are a part of the our agency or U.S. government's foreign policy work uh, around the world. Uh, and so working with us, uh, that means, you know, we're following different U.S. government rules and restrictions that oftentimes um, can make it a little bit more challenging or to work with us, uh, but certainly not impossible. And that's part of what we want to talk to you about today, a little bit about um, how we operate and how we work. You know, if you look at USAID and how we work, uh, we work in all sorts of different sectors and areas with programs uh, in every different area. So uh, a big part of our work is delivering humanitarian assistance around the world. Uh, anytime a disaster happens outside of the United States, USAID is there and ready to respond. Uh, we do a lot of work promoting uh, global health, working in HIV AIDS, um, um, supporting the COVID-19 response around the world. Uh, as well as we do a lot of work in democracy innovation, uh, democracy development innovation. Uh, we do work um, in um, global stability, uh, as well as we have a lot of work in how we can support women and girls uh, and to promote diversity, equity, inclusion uh, around the world. Uh, and then finally, one of our, our key areas that we always focused on is how can we catalyze innovation and partnerships um, for organizations to help lift people, lift communities up um, so how do we partner with the private sector? How do we find innovative ideas that can be taken into development contexts and cultures? Uh, and so this kind of with this being our work, these are the types of areas that we have funding opportunities or ways to partner with USAID as an organization uh, across all these many different sectors. So USAID is a, a global organization. We have a, a small office that's headquartered in Washington, D.C. in the United States. Uh, but as you can see here, we work around the world. Uh, in many different um, locations. Just some of the, the terminology that you'll hear is oftentimes used, sometimes accidentally in these webinars, but you'll hear us use is uh, terms like a mission. A mission is a reference to USAID's office overseas. So, for example, we have a, a mission in Kenya. We have a mission in India. Uh, those are our offices that are located overseas. Um, one of the, the great things about USAID is um, our organization is made up of over 9,000 people uh, around, working around the world, uh, many of which are actually from individuals that are from the countries and communities that we are serving in. Uh, we call them our foreign service national colleagues. Uh, and so we have a mix of, of staff that are both locally hired, uh, a mixture of Americans that are working overseas as well. Uh, but you can see here really our, our global footprint and presence of where we are working uh, around the world. 
Um, one of the things that I do want to talk to you about is a little bit about sort of our operating framework, how we as an organization kind of uh, function. So I think a lot of folks think about USAID, they think about us maybe as like a foundation uh, or an organization that, you know, we just have um, pockets of grants to, to hand out to anyone or everyone. Uh, and that's not necessarily how we work. We are uh, an organization that thinks long term and everything that we do uh, with all of our programs and activities. Uh, and this is really kind of outlined in a document or in a resource called the program cycle. The program cycle is sort of our guiding framework for how we do our development work, how we engage with communities, how we engage with um, organizations, how we really understand what the challenges are of the communities that we're operating in, uh, and then how the activities that we then um, choose to fund, the activities we choose to implement as an organization, uh, as well as how we learn uh, from those activities and incorporate that into future programs and future work. Um, so if you're interested in learning about sort of how USAID does development, I'd encourage you to take a look at the program cycle. Uh, like I said, it's a really helpful framework for how we sort of think about our work and how we think about our development activities. One of the other things that really guides a lot of our work, we have a number of different policies and strategies, frameworks and visions. These are documents that really guide sort of how we think about in, in areas in different sectors or different uh, communities. So. I'll give you a couple examples. So we have a, um, a strategy around water. Uh, it talks specifically about, you know, here's the type of interventions that we as an organization are planning on making within the water sector uh, as an agency. We have a, a strategy around women and girls. And here's how we want to incorporate women and girls uh, and inclusivity in all of our programs and activities. Uh, we also have some higher, le higher level policies, such as uh, we're getting ready to roll out a new locally led development policy that looks at how can we as an organization better support local communities? How do we think about engaging with local organizations as a part of our work? Um, our office also has an acquisition and assistance strategy, a strategy that's specifically focused on how we as an organization wanna partner with other organizations. How do we promote diversity, equity, inclusion? How do we engage more with local organizations? Uh, how do we as an organization simplify the way that we work? Uh, and so there's a number of different policies and strategies and frameworks that really guide um, specific sort of sectoral areas or parts of our, our program or activities. Uh, and so if you're interested, if you're sort of a gender expert, if you're a water expert, or if you're interested in government contracts, you can find all of our strategies, frameworks, and policies available on our website uh, to dive a little bit deeper into. Um, but one of the, the most important documents I do want to highlight to you today for you to take a look at is something called our Country Development Cooperation Strategies, or the acronym is CDCS. For every country that we operate in, we have a, a three to five year plan that outlines um, the type of work, activities, uh, and programs that USAID is going to undertake in a particular country. The CDCS looks at or is a part of our work of engaging with local governments, local communities, looking at what other um, governments are doing sort of in country or other donor organizations are doing in country and outline sort of what is our strategic approach in Kenya, for example, for the next three to five years. Um, it could include specific education activities or edu activities um, related to any number of, of areas. But the CDCS is really sort of like our guiding framework for here's everything we're going to do in a particular country for the next three to five years. And so, um, you know, if you are based out of Nepal and you want to know what USAID is doing, you can get look at our CDCS for Nepal and you can find everything that the agency is planning on doing there uh, within within Nepal. And this is particularly important as you think about trying to partner with USAID, the CDCS will be the sort of the guide or framework um, that you'll that you'll be able to identify specific activities and ways to, to partner with USAID. Um, so as you think about wor working with us, I really encourage you to take a look at the CDCS document for your particular country or region um, to better understand sort of the type of work that USAID is doing. Because when we think about partners or organizations we want to work with, we're looking for organizations that can help support our CDCS document for the particular country uh, that we're working in. Uh, and so um, part of, I think, part of an approach of coming to USAID is helping to make those connections, say, hey, we're doing work in, you know, water in Nepal um, in, in this particular area. And I see in your CDCS, you've highlighted here some specific interventions that you USAID is planning on doing in Nepal around water. You know, 
perhaps we can work together. So it's a really helpful document to guide, kind of guide how you talk to USAID and how you approach the organization. Finally, the other document I'll highlight is our ADS or Automated Directive System. These are USAID's operating policies and procedures. Uh, if you ever look at a funding opportunity or look at things on, on the agency's website, you'll find all sorts of references to ADS. So the, the program cycle is outlined in ADS 200, or if you're working in a grants and contracts, you'll find things in ADS 300. Uh, but there's all sorts of references to different ADS chapters. Uh, but it's just a, a helpful thing for you to know about as you look at partnering with USAID. Um, so I want to talk a little bit next about how we fund our work. As I, as I said, a lot of people, I think, think of USAID as sort of a, a foundation uh, or a sort of USAID as a foundation uh, or an organization that sort of has pots of grants that we can kind of give out and distribute however we want to. Uh, and that's not necessarily true. So USAID's budget comes from American taxpayers. Uh, we are, like I said, we are a U.S. government agency. Uh, and so we get our budget annually from our Congress. Um, and our Congress and the executive office actually determine what our prior budget priorities are every year. Uh, a lot of our funding has to be used within a, a year long period. Um, that's how long we have to actually spend our money. Uh, and then Congress sets our funding levels every year. And oftentimes with our funding levels, there are specific um, directions that our Congress gives us for how we spend the money, when we spend the money, where the money spent, uh, and you know what different sectors. Uh, so, for example, you know we get a large portion of funding related to our global health activities or health activities, uh, and those fundings must be spent within health activities. Or, you know, sometimes we'll get programs uh, funding sp for specific countries, and then that funding has to be spent in that specific country. Uh, and so oftentimes it's a bit of a, a puzzle of how do we um, kind of spend our money uh, in different countries that we operate in. And a lot of that is really uh, outlined in our country development cooperation strategies. Um, I encourage you to, like I said, go back and take a look at those. Um, and sort of out of those country development cooperation strategies, out of strategies, we then ask for organizations to compete for funding. So to get USAID funding, it is a competitive process where we invite organizations to submit concept notes, proposals, or applications to very specific programs or activities. Uh, and then we review everyone's concept note or proposal or application. Uh, and then we uh, make a determination on what, or, what proposal we uh, as an organization want to um, fund or work with kind of moving forward. Um, so it's important to note it is a competitive process to getting funding from USAID. Just to give you a little bit kind of broader picture of sort of how our funding is broken down. This is last fiscal year, uh, fiscal year 2021. Um, you get a sense here of just how our, our funding is broken down um, by different sectors or different areas. Um, last year, uh, health was a little bit higher than normal just because of our USAID's response to um, COVID-19. But you can see here um, some of the different sectors, areas, and how much funding uh, of USAID's uh, budget went to last year. Um, and the other thing I would just note as you're looking at this, there's a lot of cross-cutting areas, cross-cutting initiatives. I've talked about water, I've talked about diversity, equity, inclusion, uh, women's empowerment, and oftentimes those uh, activities are kind of cross-cutting initiatives. You know, water certainly plays a huge role in humanitarian assistance and our health programs. It can play a role in governance programs or economic growth programs. So uh, if you see, see an area that you're working in that you don't see on this budget, just know that it's kind of incorporated in, in other areas. Uh, but this really gives you kind of a, a good breakdown of how our how our funding is organized by different sectors. Um, so with that, I want to stop talking and, and turn it over to my colleague Rachel Chilton to talk a little bit more about sort of the partnering process. What does it actually mean to partner with USAID? How do you find funding opportunities, et cetera? So with that, I will turn it over to you, Rachel. Great. Thank you so much, Matt. And thank you everyone for being here today with us. Uh, we really appreciate having this opportunity to speak with you. So as Matt said, I'd like to talk a little bit more in depth about partnering with USAID and how you navigate the partnership process with our agency. Uh, first, I'd just like to talk a little bit about our partners. So USAID is very passionate about tapping into the expertise, resources, and innovations of a diverse array of organizations across the public, private, and nonprofit sectors to find and implement groundbreaking solutions to the development challenges that we are identifying. 
So the agency partners with many different types of organizations. These can be U.S. organizations and non-U.S. organizations. And worldwide today, we have more than 3,000 partners, and we're hoping to continue to, to grow that partner base and to diversify it. Um, if you visit USAID.gov under the How to Work with USAID section, you can find more details um, about the different types of partners that work with us. And I can drop a link in the chat for you if you want to explore that a little bit more um, to, to learn more about those different types of organizations. So that's a little bit about uh, the different types of, of entities that we partner with. Next, I'd like to talk about our funding and how we award our funds. So the majority of USAID's funds are awarded competitively through contracts, grants, or cooperative agreements. Um, as you can see on this slide, for acquisition, USAID utilizes contracts to purchase technical services, goods, and products, and that's usually from US-based or locally-based firms to implement specific programs as directed by the agency. So these particular contract opportunities um, are always posted on SAM.gov, and it usually comes in the form of a request for a proposal, RFP, sometimes a request for quote, depending on what it is, um, which is also known as an RFQ. So uh, we encourage you to regularly monitor SAM.gov for those types of contract opportunities. Um, for assistance, USAID utilizes grants and cooperative agreements and usually partners with both international and national nonprofit organizations, often referred to as non-governmental organizations or NGOs. So for grants, USAID provides funds to a responsible grantee to implement a program with little direct involvement during the life of the program. And for a cooperative agreement, uh, when these are proposed, when USAID provides funds to a partner but has a little bit more substantial involvement and contact with the partner during that project. So for grant and cooperative agreement opportunities, you can find these on grants.gov. Um, so again, we would encourage you to monitor grants.gov for these opportunities. They're usually listed as a notice of funding opportunity, also known as a NOFO. Um, so on both SAM.gov and grants.gov, there are filter options for you to select uh, opportunities just for USAID. So we would encourage you to, uh, to check those websites out and see if you can monitor some of our, our different opportunities there. Um, if you have trouble navigating those websites at the end, um, we can share links to some videos that we've recorded on our, our YouTube channel that also help you walk through those, those uh, platforms. Next, I'd like to talk about USAID's business forecast. So this is a really important resource for anyone that wants to work with USAID. Um, we're really excited about this resource. Given that the agency works in more than 80 countries around the world, it's really challenging for a small or new organization to stay on top of all of the upcoming opportunities. Um, you know, it's challenging, but a lot of the times when a, an opportunity is released on SAM.gov or grants.gov, a lot of the larger companies have already been, you know, working on proposals because they, they know it's already on the way um, and they have the resources to start preparing for it. So, um, we have this business forecast tool that provides an advanced look at opportunities that are upcoming. Um, it gives an opportunity for any organization to see what USAID is planning in the future. So this is a, a live tool um, feature that I think Matt just dropped a, a link in the chat for. Thank you. Um, that allows you to, to search and sort and filter by all the different countries in which we're working, different sectors. Um, things like small business set aside and different bureaus that we also have here in Washington, D.C. Um, so there are a, ver a variety of different opportunities on our forecast, and we require any competitive acquisition or assistance opportunity over $150,000 to be included before a solicitation is allowed to be released on SAM.gov or grants.gov. Um, so we would highly encourage you to, to take a look and search through our business forecast um, 
to, you know, see what's out there, see what's what's coming up for your particular country or sector of interest. Uh, I'll also note we do host regular quarterly business forecast webinars where we have, you know, senior leaders from across the agency provide updates on different priorities as well as talk through, you know, any new updates we might have with the forecast. We also at that time allow organizations to submit questions they might have about opportunities um, that are anticipated on our forecast and we, we post a full, you know, Q and a for everyone um, when they have questions about uh, about items. So we do host those regularly as well. Next, I'd like to talk a little bit more specifically about the eligibility of international organizations and, and how this is labeled. Um, so this is called the principal geographic code. Um, these codes are actually listed on our business forecast, uh, like I, the tool that I just mentioned. And um, this code identifies who is eligible to apply to that specific opportunity. So there are two primary codes that we use, uh, 937 and 935. So 937 is uh, US-based organizations um, or organizations based in a developing country. So only those two are eligible to apply. So for example, if there's a program that's anticipated in El Salvador and you're a, a, an organization based in Colombia, you are eligible to apply if the code says 937. And for example, you, you know, if it's a, a Canadian based entity and the op, the opportunity is in El Salvador with a 937 code, you're most likely not eligible to, to apply. Um, and then if it, if it says 935 entities from any country are, are eligible to apply. So we try really hard to identify upfront who is eligible and, you know, this is just an important um, piece of information to to take note of when you're looking at opportunities to make sure um, you know your organization is eligible to apply in the first place. So again, that is a, a principal geographic code. I'd like to also highlight a few other uh, partnership programs that the agency has. So we have a program called the Development Innovation Ventures, which is also known as DIV. Um, I think we have a few links here that Matt is going to share in the chat. So thank you, Matt. Um, it's an open innovation program that funds, you know, different ideas and solutions that you might have um, to help solve some of the, the world's biggest development challenges. So you can learn more about the DIV program at the, the link that Matt just dropped in the chat. We also recently over the last year or two um, started our new partnerships initiative. Uh, where some of our, our different opportunities are identified specifically as a, a new partnership initiative, also known as NPI um, and opportunity. And this initiative is aimed at lowering the barriers for new partners, including uh, local organizations, U.S. small businesses, faith-based organizations, et cetera, uh, to be able to apply to those specific opportunities. So you can learn more about NPI um, at the link that Matt shared. We also have the, the Global Development Alliance, um, also known as GDA. So these are our partnership opportunities for USAID and the private sector to work together to develop um, market-based approaches to solve the different development challenges that, that USAID and the team have identified um, in a specific country. And then finally, we also have another program called the American Schools and Hospitals Abroad, also known as ASHA. And this particular program provides assistance to overseas schools, libraries, and hospital centers. So if you're interested in that type of work, um, you can visit the ASHA link that Matt dropped in the chat. Next, I'd like to talk a little bit about USAID and US small businesses. So we actually have an office of Small and Dis Disadvantaged Business Utilization, also known as OSDABU. Um, if you would like to connect with them directly, you can find their email address on the screen. It's OSDABU1 at USAID.gov. Uh, um, so I just wanted to quickly note that 
the Osdebu team regularly provides uh, review and clearance for domestic acquisitions over $250,000. Uh, they look at the different type of, of market research that was done um, by other USAID staff and the team will do their own market research if necessary to make sure that we are um, advising appropriately on if a, <clears throat> a solicitation should be a small business set aside or not. Uh, the team also regularly conducts small business training um, for acquisition and technical staff across the agency, and this includes various forms of market research. Um, the team also uh, addresses agency initiatives that impact the small business program, such as uh, the new partnership initiative I just mentioned, as well as category management. And, you know, our team works very closely with the small business office. Um, on outreach and, you know, we collaborate a lot with with them on internal and external um, outreach to partners to conduct various activities. Uh, the small business office typically hosts a small business conference each year. I'm not sure if I believe it should be happening sometime this fall. Um, so you can check out the USAID small business office uh, website to to keep up to date on information about when that conference might be happening. So again, this is for US small businesses. So just wanted to make sure we touch base on that. Um, <clears throat> finally, I'd also like to talk about registration. So this is really important if uh, you know, your organization would like to work with USAID um, before applying for a grant or contract from the US government, so for any agency, um, including USAID, all organizations must be registered in uh, a system called CAGE or NCAGE as well as SAM. So these registrations are free, but it takes some time. So please be sure to, to do your research and prepare uh, before you start the process. So as a US entity, once you enter in the system for award management, also known as SAM, so if you go on SAM.gov, um, you can learn more about this. For a unique entity ID, also known as a, a UEI, your CAGE code will automatically be generated in the system. Um, this new UEI process was just established in April, so if you're not familiar with it, uh, you know, please take the time to, to look at SAM to make sure you're registered there and you have a, a UEI number. We've been working on a number of materials um, to help guide folks on this. And I believe we have a training that we can link in the chat shortly um, to help walk you through this. So you will have to prepare a checklist of all the items you need, including your business address, names of the CEO, information about the goods and services you provide, and other details about your organization. One thing that's important to note is that you can only register in English, um, and it can take several hours to complete the registration in SAM, so just make sure you, you budget uh, time there when you start to go through the process. Um, again, more information about each of these sites is available online. We have a, a quick uh, a quick reference guide that we can also share. Um, so thanks to Matt for dropping that in the chat. Perfect. Um, and with that, um, that's a little bit about registration. Uh, and finally, before I, I kick it back over to Matt, I'd just like to talk a little bit about um, ways that you can stay connected with our team. So as Matt said at the beginning of the call, we are the industry liaison team for the agency. Uh, we work in the Office of Acquisition and Assistance. We have several resources to help you stay engaged with our team and uh, learn more about the, the latest USAID updates. So you can always reach us at industryliaison at usaid.gov uh, through email if you have any questions. You're always welcome to send us an email and we will be happy to engage with you that way. We are also very active on social media. Uh, we have a LinkedIn group that you are welcome to join. We post resources and USAID opportunities there, as well as different events like this one. Um, and we have a Twitter handle that's also called Work With USAID, as well as a Facebook page um, and a, a YouTube channel where we post all of our, our videos. So I would highly encourage you, if you're on social media, to, 
to join us in our groups and follow our pages as well as our YouTube channel um, to stay up to date on the, the latest information and, and learn more tips and tricks on how to navigate the USAID partnership process. And finally, we also have a distribution list um, that you can join. We send out a monthly newsletter um, highlighting new and exciting things from our office, as well as other kind of ad hoc, um, you know, policy updates and things that might be helpful for you to know. So uh, we encourage you to stay in communication with the, with our team and reach out to us. Um, when you have questions and also you're more than welcome to let us know if there are things we can be doing better. So thanks again to Matt for uh, dropping those links in the chat for us. And finally, I'd like to also just talk about our new website. If you have not had a chance to visit it yet, uh, we launched a new website called workwithusaid.org last November. Um, it is a USAID funded learning platform and a resource hub designed to serve as a, a one stop shop for organizations preparing to work with USAID. So we really hope that this website can help you uh, better navigate and understand uh, the partnership process at USAID. It is completely free to use. Uh, you can access it globally anywhere around the world. Um, and we have a number of different resources and, and services on there that we really hope help lower the barriers for, for new and underutilized partners uh, um, <clears throat> that they often face when trying to work with the agency. So with that, I'm happy to hand it back over to Matt just to give a quick little tutorial on uh, the different features and exciting things we have on workwithusaid.org. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. Um, I know that was a, a lot of information um, that we just provided and um, a couple of things I want to highlight, you know, work with USAD.org is really set up to help guide you through uh, almost all these things that we talked about um, in this webinar today. We will be sharing out both the recording of the webinar, um, a link to the slides, as well as um, a lot of the links that we provided um, in today's conversation um, just for your uh, awareness. So I want to quickly talk you through work with USAD.org, which is really set up to help start help your organization partner with USAD. Um, really, this is sort of like a how to work with USAD 101 uh, and this website will really get you into the details of everything you need to know to be able to, to partner with the agency. Um, so first and foremost, if you're, you're new to USAD, you can click on learn here. Uh, we have a really helpful kind of checklist for organizations that are interested in partnering with USAD. Just some simple questions, simple information about how the agency uh, makes decisions. How do you find funding opportunities? You know, what are the sort of eligibility requirements to work with USAID? Obviously, today's webinar is just in English, but we have this checklist available in a number of languages as well. Uh, if that is easier for you to understand or kind of process or even work with um, your colleagues. Uh, so we have this information in a, in a number of languages that you can download. Uh, this document and take it back and, and share it with others. Um, so this is a really helpful start here guide. Like I said, this kind of covers a lot of what we talked about in today's webinar. Um, but one of the things I, I want to encourage you to do um, as an organization after today's webinar is add your information to our partner directory. So one of the things for USAD, you know, we have a lot of organizations that we work with around the world. Uh, I think we have around 3,400 organizations globally that we work with each year. But as Rachel highlighted, we're always looking for new organizations. Uh, and so we need your help kind of identifying who you are, what organizations are out there. So we launched a, this partner directory um, just last year. Um, and really this directory is set up to help us identify different organizations that are working in the different spaces that USAID is working in. Uh, so you can see here, we have, I think to date over 2,700 organizations globally in our partner directory. I really want to encourage you to add your organization and information um, to the directory. So I'll just click on one uh, directory example, the Ethiopian Organization for Migration. Um, you can see here just a short profile about the organization, their social media networks, kind of the type of organization they are, where they work, uh, as well as the different sectors or areas that they work in. One of the great things about the partner directory is that um, not only can uh, USAD staff find you, but other organizations can find you as well. 
Uh, we know that both USAID staff and many of our larger partners are using the partner directory to do research to identify new groups that they can potentially partner with. Um, so I want to encourage you today to, to add your organization to the partner directory. You can under, if you click on find a partner, you can list your organization in the directory. Typically takes anywhere between five to 10 days to review your profile um, to identify just to check and confirm all your information to make sure that it meets sort of our standards for the directory. But the directory is open for anyone, whether you currently work with USAID or your new organization uh, or you're looking to work with USAID. One of the other things I'll just highlight is you can also sort and search in the partner directory by different sectors that USAID works in, different countries, uh, as well as different a um, uh, number of different other types of filters. So one of the things that we added on here uh, is the ability to search for actually USAID existing partners. So if you click on my organization as a prime partner, you can apply the filter and search, uh, and you can identify current USAID partners that are working with current organizations that are working with USAID, who they are, uh, and where countries they're working in. So this is a great way for you to do research as well to identify other organizations. So if you're working in, uh, let's say, um, education in South Africa, um, you can find PAC South Africa on our partner directory. You can reach out to them uh, and let and identify yourself as an organization to potentially partner with together. Uh, so this is a really helpful tool to you to identify potential organizations to partner with. One of the other things that we uh, launched with this website is something called a pre-engagement assessment. It's a really helpful tool for you to identify uh, what is your organization's readiness to be able to partner with USAID. Uh, you may be listening to the webinar thinking like, man, there's no way I could be in a position to be able to, um, to partner with USAID. Uh, but this tool really helped guide you through the process to make sure that your organization is set up and ready to, to be able to compete for funding. Uh, so through this simple assessment, I think it's 48 questions. It takes it honestly about 15 to 20 minutes to go through the, the assessment. Um, but it just answers some basic questions around programming, compliance, human resources, program management, as well as budget and finance. And one of the, the great things about this tool is that once you've actually taken the pre-engagement assessment, you will get a customized report um, that shows you sort of what is your readiness to be able to partner with USAID across these different areas. So this is just a sample of report uh, here that you could take a look at, um, but it's a customized report just for your organization. No one at USAID sees this report. Uh, this is just for you. You can share the report or download the report once you take it, but It'll give you a score across these different areas and your readiness to be able to partner with USAID. Uh, but then more importantly, it'll give you specific actions uh, and reference guides, tools that you can do to actually help build your capacity, build your readiness to be able to partner with USAID. Uh, so if you're a new organization, this is a great tool for you to take to think about, you know, what do we need to do in budget and finance or what HR policies possibly do we need to have in place? What are the registration requirements that exist? Um, so encourage you to, to um, take this assessment and really identify um, some of the things that you need to do to be ready to partner with USAID. Um, and one of the things we also have in this uh, on work with USAID.org is a library of resources. I saw a question in the box earlier about different trainings that exist. So we've gone through and curated sort of some of the best trainings we know about how to work with USAID on a variety of different areas from financial management, human resources, diversity, equity, inclusion, communications, et cetera. Um, so on this uh, page, you can find all sorts of trainings and resources that you can take to really help build your capacity, build your readiness to work with USAID, or just learn more about um, how to partner with the agency or how to work in international development. We also have some tools in a, number, a couple of different languages, both French, uh, Spanish, and Portuguese. Uh, and you'll see throughout the website, we're trying to add more and more languages, more and more resources in different languages to the website. Our ultimate goal is, is to hopefully have a, a fully version, fully uh, functioning version of this website in French, in Arabic, in Spanish, uh, as well as English, um, hopefully in the future. Um, but in the meantime, we have a number of resources available in different languages. Um, we also have a great uh, news and insights blog that we post on a couple times a week that really highlight um, examples of um, successful partnerships. Um, we have information such as, you know, different calendars, events, things that are happening, funding opportunities, uh, as well as ways to, to connect, get connected to um, USAID. 
Uh, so I encourage you to take a look at the blog. Like I said, we're updating it two to three times a week uh, with a host of different resources. So, you know, this is one example. We, we go through and highlight all of the different funding opportunities that are coming out through the month of August, when they're due, uh, what country they're in, as well as links to the different resources. Uh, we do this each month. Um, and so it's a really, like I said, a really helpful tool. We also just released a new events calendar uh, where you can go on and register for different events, identify different events that are happening at USAID. Uh, so in just a little bit, our administrator is gonna be doing uh, a Twitter space event um, with a chef on responding to the drought in the Horn of Africa. Uh, and you can find um, a number of different other events um, that are happening within the agency. We're continually updating this um, calendar. So it's a great place if you wanna stay connected to find different events happening within the agency. Uh, and then just two quick thing, final things. I know we talked about the business forecast as well as SAM.gov and grants.gov, places to find funding opportunities. If you come to work with USAD.org, you can find a direct link to all these resources at the top screen just to make it a little bit easier for you to access. Uh, and then finally, we have a frequently asked questions page. Uh, we have over a thousand questions that we've been asked throughout the last couple of years that really help to uh, answer some of the most um, regular questions that we get from an organization, as an organization. So encourage you to take a look at that document and those resources. Um, and with that, I wanna just thank you once again, everyone for joining today's um, webinar and discussion. Um, we hope you found this helpful to us. Um, we really wanna say more than anything, our door is open. You can email uh, Rachel and I, uh, both of us get the email industry liaison at usad.gov. Um, you're welcome to email us uh, whenever you want to, um, just to share a little bit more about your organization or ask specific questions about how to partner with USAID. Uh, and like I said, just to recap, we will be sharing uh, a recording of this presentation, uh, as well as um, the slides uh, and some of the links that we highlighted today is in an email, um, hopefully later today uh, at the conclusion of today's event. So. Thank you once again, everyone. And with that, Rachel, I don't know if we have any questions that have come in the chat box since I've been talking, but love to take a few questions from folks. Sure, thank you, Matt. And thank you again to everyone for joining us today. I know that was a lot of information. So as Matt said, again, uh, you know, if you have additional questions and they don't get answered um, in the next few minutes, please be sure to reach out to us at industryliaison at usaid.gov through email. Uh, we do have a few questions that I think we have time to answer. Um, somebody asked in the Q&A if it's possible for local NGOs to request uh, for funds from USAID by submitting a proposal, um, even if there's not a specific RFP or uh, NOFO to respond to. Yeah, so there's... USAID has um, an unsolicited proposals process. If there's not a request for proposal out there, you can submit um, funding opportunities to USAID. Um, we can drop a link into the chat box to share um, the guidelines for that. The thing I'll caveat with that is we get all, we get thousands of unsolicited proposals every year, uh, and just given how our budget's set up, given how we operate, there's often you know just a handful that are ever funded on an, an, on an annual basis. The other thing I would specifically look at, we can drop a link into the chat box. We do have a locally led development um, unsolicited proposals box um, as well that actually has um, uh, funding set aside each year um, at USAID specifically for um, those types of proposals or activities. Uh, and there are, you know, any given year, there are um, different funding opportunities that are available with that. Um, sometimes, you know, countries that have funded too many proposals in a particular country, other times there's a little bit more space, but um, I will drop the link to that specific program in the chat box for um, you to take a look at as well. Um, but that would be, that would probably be the one as a local organization I would specifically look at um, the most recent link I dropped in the chat box. Great. Thank you, Matt. Uh, another question I see. Um, someone noted they are a for-profit organization with headquarters in London, but have offices in several countries. Uh, do we recommend registering with their global HQ in London or one of their local offices in which they are interested in working with USAID? 
so I assume this is, I think, related to work with USAID.org. Um, I think you could do you could do either. We see a lot of local offices registering in the website and platform as well as um, the um, kind of like corporate office registering in it. I don't think there's any harm in, in registering with the local organizations and sometimes it's helpful as we do market research to know that you have a, a kind of specific local office there. So um, it's really up to you what you want to do, but we have we have a little bit of both. I think that PAC South Africa example I showed earlier on the partner directory is a PAC is a, a large um, NGO organization, I think, based out of the US, um, but obviously they registered their South Africa office. So you're, you're certainly welcome to do both. Thank you. I see uh, someone else has noted they have been having some issues with their SAM registration um, and wondering if there's a way for us to help escalate the issue. So I will note that SAM.gov is owned by a different U.S. government agency called the General Services Administration, also known as GSA. Um, so there's kind of limited ability in, in what we can do to help escalate it. Um, if you do have an active or pending award with USAID, we would encourage you to, to reach out to your respective contracting or agreement officer um, to see if they can help get it escalated. Unfortunately, if, if you do not fall into one of those categories, um, we can't do much from our end, but I will drop in the chat um, GSA's Federal Service Help Desk link. Um, if you're not familiar with it, and they will help you uh, with your SAM.gov um, unique entity identifier UEI issues there. So, uh, Matt, I'm not sure if you have anything else to add to that response. Okay. Um, trying to jump back and forth. I know we answered a lot of the questions uh, through typing already. Uh, I'm not sure if you see anything else. Yeah, I see a couple of questions. I think they were sent to uh, maybe just to me. Um, there's a question, does USAID work directly with startups, uh, startup organizations? Um, one of the things that the, the DIV program that I think Rachel highlighted earlier, it's USAID.gov slash DIV, D-I-V, um, is one of the, the best programs we have of working with startups, organizations. The DIV program has, I think, four different levels of funding. Um, to kind of help an organization or a startup uh, organization scale up um, in their work or activity. So you can uh, get a smaller amount of funding and kind of take an opportunity to scale. So I would specifically take a look at the DIV program uh, if you're looking at as a, a startup organization. Um, I think that's about it for the questions that I see. Um, that were sent directly to me, um, but I do um, really want to thank everyone for their time for joining today's uh, webinar and discussion. Hopefully, you found it helpful. Um, I know there's probably a lot of questions around your organization and um, different things you can do. Like we've said, um, you can email us at industry liaison at any time. Um, we can also drop the links into our social media channels and chat uh, once again into the chat box. But encourage you to follow us on LinkedIn. Um, Twitter, Facebook, any of the platforms that you're you're on. Uh, it's really one of the best ways to stay updated and engaged with USAID as we're posting information a couple times a day on those different resources that are um, available for you to, um, to partner with USAID. Uh, and like I said, we will be sharing a copy of the recording, the presentation, and the links via email, hopefully later today once we've had a chance to, to go through all the information. So thank you again, everyone, for joining, and we look forward to talking with you soon. Thank you.